Okay, good morning to everyone. Thanks for being here uh, for the first presentation of this session. And even if the subject of this part of my research is about the uh, software uh, and the model behind it, um, actually this contribution will be more about a simple concept than about programming. Mm -hmm. And uh, side, I'm not a program. I'm a self. I'm a self-learned programmer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mainly an archaeologist. So this contribution uh, is about the, the, the importance of the premises. It's about the standardization of strictly archaeological data. And with strictly archaeological, I mean field, raw field archaeological data. So uh, let's start with a brief definition of, of data. Uh, they are piece of information that uh, acquire sense only when they are related to each other. And uh, during uh, archaeological uh, works, obviously, a big quantity of that of data is collected in form of technical sheets, finds inventories, graphic documentation, etc., etc. According to criteria uh, defined by the tradition of study, and a point that is important under my point, point of view is that those criteria are often encoded by the local administration, by the archaeological local administration. And those data, in my opinion, uh, they are among the most important ones an historian can <coughs> aspire to, because they are reliable and they are many. They are mostly analytic, since they are collected according to physical laws, as stratigraphy does. And they establish very basic, very simple uh, typologies. And, uh, and they, they allow to cover almost all aspects of, of the reality, of the historical reality. So in the second place, uh, archaeological data are continuously produced. This production varies from place to place, but let's take the, the example of, uh, of Barcelona. In the last 10 years, a mean of uh, 100 excavation every year was undertaken. And uh, every, every intervention um, produces a report of between 200 and 2,000 pages which a small part is text, is description and interpretation, and the greater part, the rest, the big rest, is raw data. Uh, so, uh, say that archaeological data are good and they are abundant, standardization plays a really important role in order to take advantage of this, of this contingence. By means of uh, an homogeneous recording system, mm, the atomized data, a result of many interventions, could be interpreted, could be viewed, could be visualized as a unique big archaeological site. Mm -hmm. And urban archaeology is the place where this concept is, is better explained, is better visualized. There's a lot of small projects that describe a unique Mm, cultural landscape, diachronic cultural landscape. And from this point of view, obviously, the use of software as can help a lot. Mm, mm, the software can minimize the formal variation between records of different interventions. Uh, it speeds up the process of insertion of the data, and it allows a fast query of the data. Yes, those are obvious, obvious aspects. So, uh, say that we just spoke about the importance and the abundance of field data. How do archaeologists act regarding the collection of data? Uh, instead of speaking of, uh, about my personal experience, I can quote a, a report of 2015, uh, according to which it seems that only 
35% of archaeologists use a database, use a database. And uh, approximately the half of the documentation produced is recorded by digital means. So uh, the conclusion of the authors is that they are really sad results. Uh, archaeologists mm, don't care about the most basic data management, data management. Uh, even if you all, well, if you all archaeologists learn at the first, the first day in the classroom at the faculty that archaeology is a destructive technology, technique. Uh, so there is a paradox in the archaeological use of, uh, of, the, of the digital resources. We are, we are exploring new technologies, but uh, we, we lack of some basic protocols. Among that, the standardization of those data. data. And uh, there is another problem, in my opinion, that uh, not only uh, archaeologists rarely use some software more, more than a spreadsheet, but when they use some software, this software often is not compatible, is not, and not only the software, this is not important. What, what is worse is that the, the schema, the, the encoding of the data is not, is not the same, it's, not, it's difficult to, to, to compare numerically different sets of data in the, in the day, in the daily archaeology, let's say. Um, when, when a researcher wants to compare different sets of, da of data, he, he has to, to, make, to, to make a time-consuming operation, hmm? almost by, by hand. Uh, so, um, ah, there, is, there is some well-known software for managing, for collecting, archaeological field data. Here I, I list the most, probably the most known, the, more, the, the better known. Uh, the first one is an historical one. I don't know if someone of you heard about it. It's from the, the, the 70s. Hmm? And the, the last one is a British one, and the, the, the archaeological recording kit is it's the, the most recent one, and, and it's, it, it has some success. But uh, why, even if we have software, we archaeologists have software, why we cannot homologate this, this data? Uh, well, I think that, uh, this will be the subject of a brainstorming of another communication, but I, I, I would like to note some, some basic point, eh? the uh, software have to, have to be capable of importing and exporting data, Mm, this, uh, we, we cannot aspire to a unique software. We, we, have, to, we have to work with, with different formats of data. It has to be multilingual and multicultural. Mm, often these software are really geographically uh, specific. Mm, Romans are in Britain, in France, and, uh, and, uh, and in Italy, and in Catalonia. If I want to compare different sets, I need, I need a unique language. Yes. I Okay, well, yes, I'm uh, almost done. You have to be user-friendly, and eh? this is the first thing, it's a topic. This is, if you ask to, 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 to an archaeologist, the first, the first answer will be, it has to be user-friendly, uh, the software I use. And it has to be open source to, to collaborate. Okay, uh, now let's, uh, uh, finally, I, I will, I w I'm going to pass a carousel of, uh, of screenshot of the program I wrote. Uh, I'm not mm, selling my product, uh, not, not this time. So I, <laughs> so I, I will let you you get with the idea uh, how I implemented uh, this those those concept. Mm, this is the the conceptual schema uh, in which the the standard acts like a, like a vehicle to pass information between different stages of of the of an heritage research. 
And uh, I wrote two, two, two types of program. Uh, the first one is uh, data collection, data collection interface. It's, there is a version for uh, computer and a version for uh, phone, uh, portable device, working with the Android system operation. And the second one is the data processing interface. So, so let's have a look, a brief look, some some basic characteristics, some uh, some aspect. Huh? Um, we we can hear a screenshot of the of the the phone version on the right. So da data are uh, structured um, according to the most usual way of uh, of. of of managing archaeological field data, and though they are all concept uh, to to which archaeologists are used to to uh, more uh, example from the from from the phone version, and um, you can you can obviously make the most common operations. It can uh, the program can speed speed up a little uh, the insertion of the data, and this is an important point under the point of view of the salvage archaeology. We have to be fast. Hmm? Uh, the use of uh, sensors, uh, the the system alert about the incongruence of the of the data. And obviously, you can export export uh, in several formats, three-dimensional uh, model, or even the the, the Harris matrix uh, on, the, on the on the right. And uh, if we if we use if you use a standard, no, it's it's uh, it's easier to write software for uh, processing those data. And here we have an example with which administration can merge several interventions into a bigger database, uh, can import other format, old, old uh, reports, and can experiment with some more advanced characteristics as the, the automatic dating of stratigraphic units by statistics, or the identification of residual material, or the, some chart a little more elaborated than the most basic one to which we archaeologists are, are used to, to, to see the, the bar chart. This in this case, for example, is the, is the, is the evolution of pottery uh, according to a um, well-known index of economy used in economics. So in conclusion, uh, three point. I'm uh, in conclusion. <laughs> Three points. Uh, we have to preserve archaeological field uh, data. And we, we archaeologists, we are not the only ones who touch this data. Eh? Probably in the future, some other researchers, even if and even if those data are not will be will not be published, other researchers will will look at. At, their, uh, at our data. And uh, the salvage archaeology, the administration archaeology uh, have a great, uh, has a great potential and it has to be exploited. And uh, it seems that archaeologists, we, 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 don't, we don't adopt the new technologies. So, so while we are exploring the new technology, we, we have to care, we have to ensure that the old technology are spread between our colleagues in the daily archaeology. This was all, thanks, and thank you very much.